for many 17-year-olds, just meeting Toronto Raptors player Fred Van Vliet would be a dream come true. How you doing? Good. Congratulations, man. Thank you. But the star point guard and famous underdog is known for raising expectations. Glad to have you. I can't wait to get a relationship with you, meet you a little bit more. Abdullahi Hassan from Toronto has just won a new scholarship funded by Fred. It will pay for Hassan's business studies at the University of Toronto, and an extra perk, he'll get one-on-one -on -one mentoring with Fred himself. I'm grateful for this whole experience and like, you know, the scholarship and meeting Fred himself. I watch basketball all the time, so seeing him play, like, uh, definitely, like, you know, admire, uh, it's something I admire about him. A household name among Canadian basketball fans, Fred Van Vliet was an undrafted player who beat the odds becoming a 2019 champion and an NBA All-Star. He's also an entrepreneur with a clothing line and a podcast and a mission to give back to the city that opens so many doors for him. We caught up with Fred for a quick tour of the Raptors training center yes. and a lesson Obviously, on betting on yourself. Right yes. This is the Larry O'Brien trophy. This is the main attraction. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah, it's just a special thing for a lot of people. It's beautiful. Oh my God, amazing what you let us kind of be a part of to watch is this scholarship that you are launching with the University of Toronto for um, black and indigenous students. And so why, why did you want to launch a scholarship? Um, there was this huge social justice push in the world um, globally. And I think um, just some of the internal conversations we had was how do we push envelopes and how do we challenge the corporations, whether that's the team or, or local businesses or a college in this instance to make an effort, you know, in the community. And I think this is one of the things that was born out of that, which was to offer a, a full scholarship um, based in entrepreneurial skills and, and um, pursuits, giving a kid that may not have had as good of a chance at this, a chance I think is, is pretty special. I also know that it's really, it's really important for you to stay connected to this community and in Toronto, I actually heard it was like part of your recent negotiations. Yeah. And w why? I'm not gonna come live in this beautiful city, enjoy all the fruits of the labor and, and all the accolades and without paying some of that back. And, and that's just a core belief that I have. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about, about where you come from. Mm -hmm. You come from Rockford, Illinois, which I know is near Chicago, but yeah. not Chicago. Right. Yeah. So yeah, Rockford, Illinois is, uh, smaller city, you know, in comparison to Toronto. It's about 150, 200,000 people. You know, just one of those hard-working, blue-collar cities and real people, real down-to-earth people, small community. And um, it's really just sharpened me as a man and um, as a person. How? How so? Obviously, uh, I lost my dad at five years old. So, like, just from that early on, you're in survival mode, just learning how to deal with people, learning how to pay attention to your surroundings and um, it just toughens you up. It just hardens you up a little bit. I wonder if I could also ask you about your stepdad. Yes. Who I know plays an important role in your life as well. Yeah. Uh, but I read that he would wake you up at like the crack of dawn yeah. and make you and your brother wear these 30 pound vests yeah. to work out. And what was that like at the time? Oh, uh, it was terrible at the time. <laughs> it was horrible because, um, you know, after my dad passed, my mom kind of stepped up and I had to play two roles along with my grandparents. And then once we moved in with my stepdad, it was like a complete 180. And, um, you know, he's a disciplinarian. He was a military guy, police officer. So it was just a lot of uh, regiment and um, strict rules. And uh, I look back and I can appreciate the lessons. And more than anything, you know, as a man and as someone who has kids of my own now, um, he provided, he protected us, and he kept us out of trouble. I know as part of the scholarship, it's it's tuition, it's money for books, but it's also a mentorship with you. And yeah. so why, why was that important to you, to offer that? Uh, because I think it's the most important, um, to be honest, because more than anything, we go, whatever we do throughout the day, we still got to go home to ourselves. We still have to talk to ourselves. We still have the car rides, the showers, you know, dreams. You could talk yourself out of your goals. And um, I think just having somebody to bounce ideas off of, whether it's reassurance or um, just an ear to listen to, or uh, if you have someone to share with, you'll realize that most of us all go through the same thing. So 
Um, I'm really looking forward to just being there as a uh, ear, yeah. you know, for, for the student. You've mentioned people who have been mentors to you. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me about some of them? Yeah, yeah, I mean, starting early, right? My big brother, um, who's three years older than me, he played a pivotal role in my life. He kind of raised me, you know, after we lost our dad. Um, fast forward to my stepdad, obviously, who stepped in um, and became my dad. Really, a lot of my coaches, my basketball coaches, college coaches, uh, and then, you know, the NBA. I get here, I get to learn from Kyle Lowry as, you know, on and off the court. Um, Asai is an incredible leader. Nick Nurse is an incredible leader. Um, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a chance to be around some pretty cool people. I think it's fair to say that you have now stepped into Kyle Lowry's shoes as, like, the leader of this team. Right. And so what, what does leadership look like to you? Yeah, I think first and foremost for me is always about accountability. Um, I'm going to be one of the first ones in. I'm going to get my work in. I'm going to be professional. Um, and then, I'm, then it's really just my job to challenge guys, you know, and try to get the best out of them. So I've had a chance to learn and sit back and play all different roles. Like I was a guy trying to make the team, and now, you know, I'm the leader of the team. So I've seen the range and um, all just experience that I add, you know, for my daily use. And he drills a three. Big